Well, good morning and welcome back. Oh, yesterday on the way to Windsor. Look what we just found on the road. Uh, a little worse for wear, but I think we could do something with that. Free. So yeah, we found this hatchet on the roadway. I happen to have a piece of hickory. So we're going to put a new handle on this hatchet, and I think we might try and doctor up the head a little bit, because it's... Uh, it's kind of plain. So today we're restoring the hatchet. I guess I could have just said that in the beginning and you would have all known what was going on. I've already got the handle traced out on here. I'm not sure I'm going with that design or not. Now I started to cut, oh, is that, is that called a tongue? A tang? The piece that goes in the middle. Saws are currently out on loan so I've been having to kind of fandangle my way through this and it's not exactly the quickest method. So far so far, it looks like the beaver's chewed it off. I've never done this before, guys, so hopefully we can make it work. Well, we're going to call this the tongue, because I don't know what it's called. But we got it knocked down a little bit. You see the drawing on the end there. I'm gonna try and shape it a little bit, see if we can not overdo it, because once you take it off, you can't put it back on. where we are so far it's the basic shape yes it's all got to be uh, fine-tuned so right now I'm just gonna try and smooth all this in here I want to leave this flat because I want to put something on there I'm not sure what yet but uh, yeah it's coming along we're gonna get working on this hatchet first things first we need coffee <coughs> choke on it the bones in that coffee Sorry, I'm slobbering. Whew. Learn to talk, learn to swallow. <coughs> Alright, listen, this is where we're at. This is chewed up pretty bad. But we're going to make it work. This here fits. We've got to get the handle knocked down considerably. So that we can get the head smooth with the side. See, I'm waving my hand over here. Y'all can't see that. 
you think I know what I'm doing by now. Hey guys, we're using an 80 grit sanding disc, so it takes so it takes a lot of meat off in a hurry. What I'm trying to do is just get this smoothed down to each side here, all the way around. As you can hear the ruckus in the background. You guys all right? Jeez, I'm trying to film over here. That's what I'm trying to do, get this all knocked down nice and smooth now. All right, here's where we're at. That's not too bad there. Obviously, in the front, I'm not sure if you can see that right in there. It's not quite. The wood doesn't quite all the way. The wood doesn't quite go all the way to the front, but it fits in the back nice. We're gonna knock that down a little bit. Knock this down just a little bit. We're gonna thin it out. I think it's gonna work. When we get the handle where we want it. We're then going to work on the head. So the head on this is pretty, pretty plain. So we're going to add a little bit of shape. I've already started here. We're going to continue on. What I want to do is make this a little more rounded in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. to see what I'm going for here. The rest of it I can get with a file, but I got most of the meat out here. I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. You two just about done? Hey! Hey! battle it out over there let's get to work give you all a pro tip when you're working with one of these sanding discs 80 grit put a glove on because uh, it doesn't like skin very well you know you gotta find out the hard way sometimes get into this the more I might try and thin this here out a little bit just 
just condense it a little bit. I gotta work on the arch. So we finally got this down to our basic shape. Give her. Waiting for a bang. No bang. We finally got this down to our basic shape. We got the head all cleaned up. We got it shaped. Now this was initially going to be the bottom. But the way it turned out, I kind of like the way this now looks like the top. And the head fits better on the handle. So... That's what we're going to go with right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all sanded down. Nice and smooth. To where it's, uh, where it's close to where it needs to be. And then we'll just see how it turns out from there. Hopefully it works. Well, we've gone as far as we can go with the flapper disc. we got some 120 and some 220. It's now it's easy. It's now by hand. One thing it has taken me, sorry about the darkness, many years to learn. After many years of using dollar store sandpaper, those were like five fifty a bundle. I think there's two or three sheets in each one. A little more than a dollar, but you get what you pay for. The sandpaper is lasting a whole lot longer than the dollar store stuff. So you spend more money on the dollar store stuff because you need more of it. That's logic that I just don't sometimes get, but. Coming along, we got a little more to do. Got a ridge right there. We're gonna keep going with the 120 and then we'll switch over to 220. So as you see here, the kind of rectangular shape here, nice rounded edge here. But then it goes back to a more of a, a traditional looking top. Is that called the top? I don't know. No idea. All right, we are back on the hatchet build. Now, bit of a problem. Yeah. Again, I don't have the saw to cut down the middle to put the wedge in. So, next best thing. I happen to have some leftover epoxy and resin and some black powder for making duck calls. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix some of that up. And we're going to try and get it down in there and hopefully... It'll cure and keep it in there. It'll work or it won't. It has been through a couple of winters. It's probably plenty. We're going to get all fancy. Because I thought this was black. It is black with some metal flake. 
put that in there. Well, the, yeah, um, no, we got lots. I've only got a little pour to make, but clearly I've got way too much of that metal flake powder in there. I'm gonna put our hardener in there. How much hardener do we want? Oh, let's go about that much. That's a lot of hardener. Get that all mixed up. Here goes nothing. What's the best? I'm trying to hold the camera. You know what? I'm going to let it hit the top of that right there. And then run all down, down the side just like that. And then down onto the handle so it'll cause me a problem. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let me put you down and get back to you here because this is proving to be just a tick more difficult than this red neck clock. Clearly I uh, underestimated the power of the hardener and or the quantity of the hardener. Uh, it got, I want to say it got hard, but that looks more like uh, got rubbery to me. Now, I did get some in but not enough and I'm going to tell you it's on there but I don't think it's going to work I think this is going to be an epic fail which is not the end of the world because what I will do is I will head over to one of our local automotive stores and I will get some JB Weld and I will fill that with JB Weld after I clean it out oh that's starting to get harder now that was rubbery. I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, a hard no. But that's all right. We're going to let this thing set up and kind of see what happens and uh, take it apart and do it again. Because we like. Because we like nothing better around here than doing things usually three or four times and then we get it right. When you're dealing with epoxy, this stuff here this this plastic cup is hot in fact it's so hot it's melting if you're done with this just leave it sitting outside don't put it in the garbage pail or you'll be needing a fire extinguisher but enough of that let's take this thing apart and just as i thought it didn't get all the way down to the bottom here Like I said, we're into doing things a couple of times. We're going to let this here set up overnight. We may... I'm going to finish the handle on it. We're going to try and use it the way it is. And if it comes apart, then we'll JB weld it. If it doesn't come apart, then we're going to run with it. So Ella and I had to run out. Our local store was closed. We ended up at the dollar store. And uh, got some out here, JB Weld Wannabe. I know what you're gonna say. You should have bought the JB Weld, the brand name stuff. And you're probably right. Truth be told, I've had pretty good luck with this stuff right here. Anyway, we gotta let this set up for a while longer, but we can finish the handle. So this is where we're at. We're gonna burn this just so we can make it look a little old. I don't want it looking new. All we want to do is make this look older than what it is. It's a little windy out here, so 
I keep losing my flame. Alright guys, let me show you what we got going here. So all we did is we got everything burned up here. Now normally you would just take a wire brush and just brush that out. Somebody needed a wire brush worse than I did and they got my wire brush. So we're gonna use sandpaper. So I got a leftover piece of 220. This is not going to be the actual finish, so... <clears throat> not too bad. It is time to seal this up again. I don't know if this is going to hold or not, but you know, it doesn't really matter. We can get the handle done. I'm going to try something a little bit different. 5W20. We're going to try a little bit of used motor oil. Now, before you say anything, listen, I'm trying to recycle here. Okay, don't lose your mind. We're just gonna put a little bit on here and see what it does. And because it's used, it's dark. So we'll see what happens. Oh boy, whoa, check that out. Smells like well, engine oil. I don't recommend running out right now and just trying to split some stuff up only because it's probably going to slip out of your hand and end up in the neighbor's yard. If you don't like your neighbor, that's okay. But we like ours. So, first we burned it with a propane torch. Not all over, just various spots sanded them out and we hit it with some 5w20 look at that that's beautiful that turned out pretty darn good you see here we got this gap down in here This is JB Wannabe's for. It is obviously the next morning and the hatchet project is complete. Have a look. Wood burned handle. That's a hickory handle. A little closer to the sander right there. That's all right. Side over here. 
looks pretty good you still see a little bit of the epoxy in there but that's no big deal now you ask yourself why didn't you clean up the head on it well the idea was to try and make this look a little older and i didn't want to polish the head to a shine because then i thought it would have looked a little odd so i left the scratches in there it's going to get a little bit of rust in there maybe a little bit of pitting and yes the 5w20 you can grab it it's not staying on your hands it's soaked right into the wood so for those of you that thought your hands were going to be oily they're not you gotta remember guys we're not cutting down giant 100 year oak trees with this thing this is for breaking up some kindling so we're going to give it a try see how it works and i can tell you if the head falls off of this uh, you'll never see the video guaranteed All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. I'd love to start you all fire with the kindling that I cut with this, but I'm not interested in burning the neighbor's house down just yet. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you guys want to see more restoration videos like this, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to do them. There's probably more bloodshed as well, but it is what it is. I'll see you all in the next one. Oh, hey, hit that subscribe button while you're here. We'd love to have you along. Later. Axel. Mad dogs, killer dogs. Got him by the throat. Not really. Oh, maybe. Just had a break.